Hi, I'm the Gadget Guru in Deep Park, and I'm here in Calico Basin in Nevada, just outside of Las Vegas, and here with me is Ted. Now today, Ted and I are going to attempt to address a question that many people have been asking, and that's what's the difference between a Phantom, which is what Ted is flying, and a unique Q500 4K. So stay tuned, because that starts next, right here on the Gadget Guru. Okay, if I didn't formally introduce him before, this is my friend Ted Phelps. Ted is like real estate agent extraordinaire in the Las Vegas area. Now, one thing that both of us have in common is what we both like to fly. Now, Ted started flying just a few months ago, and he flies a Phantom. Now, which one do you have? Uh, Phantom Free Professional. Okay, now, when you first got yours, and when we first met, you know, you got it as a birthday gift. I know you told me you saw one flying around and said, I got to have one. You went online and bought it. And then yep. as a birthday gift, you also got a gift certificate to a, a, a training school. Can you tell me about that? Yes, uh, the Santa Fe School of Photography in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Okay. It was a, a school where you uh, go in for a week and fly every day and learn different aspects of aerial photography. Now, that's a school that uh, I don't know if it's run by or coordinated by Romeo Dersher of, of DJI. And he brings in his expertise along with the Santa Fe School. It was a Santa Fe School coordinated with DJI for this workshop mm -hmm. to specifically fly the, the Phantoms and the Inspire for a week-long photography uh, class. Considering uh, you were there for five days, yes. how do you think your flying or photography skills changed from before till after? Well, the flying, not as much, but the photography was significant. Um, the, the, how to use the camera, how to do the settings, how to fly, how to capture, do panoramics, things of that sort. Yeah, and uh, we, we went to two different locations every day. If I remember from what you told me, you had part classroom and then part hands-on out in the field with your Phantom. Correct. We would do morning in the classroom and then in the afternoon we would normally go to two different locations to fly. Okay, the bottom one. Would you recommend this to others? And Absolutely. so under what situation? Absolutely. Uh, well, the school is wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but um, anytime you can get a chance to get that kind of education and learn how to fly and fly safely, I recommend it. Okay, now I did contact Romeo before we did the this video, and he provided a couple links. I'll put them here, and I'll put them in the accompanying story, too, because I know he has ongoing classes, but you'd recommend it? Absolutely. Okay, now here's what we're going to do now. We're just going to roll video and we're going to fly. What we're going to do, both of us have our copters in our respective cases. We're going to first see how long it takes to go from the case to the air. Now, you know, with the Typhoon, I just shipped this from Florida. I won't know till I turn it on if I have to calibrate. Now, I'm assuming with the Phantom, are you planning on calibrating? I will before? calibrate today, yes. Okay, so what we're going to do, this is not a race. Remember, we're going to fly safely. Yep. We're going to see how long it takes to go from the case to the air. Are you ready? I'm ready. Made the best copter. Let's win. go. Let's go. Remember, this is not for easy use. And Ted, we can talk during this. All right. This is not a silent movie. And as regular viewers of my channel to tell you, I probably talk too much sometimes. <laughs> now, on yours, you, you have everything there. Your batteries are charged, I assume? Yep. Okay. Well, I'm going to get this and pull this out of the way. And I don't know what your process is. It's been, I started with Phantom. It's been a while since I flew. I'm going to start turning my controller on. And then when I hear the tone, whoop, I forgot. I need to put the, uh, I need to put the blades on. Yeah, it's going to fly nice. better that way. Okay. Right. Now, you know, one difference between ours is that you need to connect your phone and the, on the unique, the, the screen, which is an Android uh, a product, is basically built into the controller. Ah, I wish I had that. Well, there's pros and cons. Um, I think the, the good thing about yours is you get to control which screen you have on there. This is kind of a take it or leave it. Ah, uh, yes. I got a better picture when I was using my iPhone versus the unique screen, but it is convenient. And it's one less thing to have to carry on, one, one less thing to pair up. Okay. All right, so that's done. Okay, now I just need to tighten my blades down. Okay, now I could go on and be turning on my copter now, but I figure I'll, I'll wait till after the blades are on. You know, I like all my fingers. I want to keep them. 
Okay, I'm gonna go over here and just set my down over here and get ready to fire her up. And again, as they said on this one, I'll know by the lighting pattern whether or not I need to calibrate. Alright. So we'll just let that get warmed up and we'll know shortly. Okay. You know, I'm getting flashing red lights. Let me give it a moment. I might need to calibrate. It says, unable to connect to camera. I don't know what I'm doing here. Oops. Okay, no, I don't have to calibrate. You know what I did? I had my switch on um, return to home. That's why I was flashing. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. All right. I'm ready to fly. Okay, so just so we can see. Okay, now don't forget to start your camera rolling. All right, okay, you go up whenever you're ready. All right. Okay, we are clear here. I'm gonna calibrate so you can fly. And okay, I'm up ahead of you. I have my GPS lock. I have strong GPS lock. We checked before. We have good ratings on everything. I think we had about a nine or 10, or I believe it was nine GPS satellites per GPS plan. Magnetology rating was good. As you can see, our win is next to nothing. While we're waiting for Ted, in fact, if you will, we'll turn around and get a shot of Ted getting ready. There we go. That's beautiful. Oh, come on, open up. Okay, Ted, let's go wave the camera. See that? I'm the one who's flying a copter. And here's the stone on the ground. I know. But don't worry, don't rush. We're gonna keep this safe. I tell you, while he's flying, why don't we take a look around here? I'm safe to fly. All right. Yeah, I tell you, before you go, I'm gonna get behind you here. We gotta be careful we step. There's horse poop around here. We're on the trail. <laughs> Nice and steady. That's a pretty copter. Okay, see it's hard to see where I'm looking at here. So I'm going to try to guess where you are in the viewfinder. I'll get a pair of the end. I think I have you in frame. I can't tell. Oh, there you are. I see you. Okay, don't move. Uh, okay. That's about as close as I'll ever want to get. Yeah. Are you picking it up? Yeah, I got you. Uh, you can't tell, you are right here. Yeah, I see it. Okay, I'm gonna go around you. Let's see if I can pull off this maneuver. I'm looking at the copter, not the screen. Oops, no, that wasn't good. Oops. I didn't like that, sorry. Well, <laughs> it's that hard when you're behind. Close there. Cue the music.
Okay, you are free to fly. Okay, I, if, if you want to see the difference of speed, yours is going to be faster. If you pull over here, we'll kind of head straight out. Okay, okay. I'll head out towards that mountain. Okay, we'll just head, I guess. I'm going to go out towards that one right there. Okay, okay, on your mark, get set, go. See, yours is much faster. It's not even a race. You're way ahead of me. Okay, now the other thing is, let's look at this. I'm gonna look at distance and see when I start losing signal. Where am I at? Okay, so here I am. Right here, I'm at 442 feet. Oh, 122 meters. Okay, oh, you're, see, mine speaks English. So does mine, you're supposed to. Okay, change I'm gonna go and just keep flying because I'm wide open here. I'm gonna see when my video starts breaking up. Because at home, I only get about 455 foot, but there's no Wi-Fi or any interference here whatsoever. Okay, I'm going to hover here for a minute. I'm at 772 feet, and I still have video. I'm at 800 feet. Okay, I started losing it there. Where are you? I'm at 859 feet. I'm at 12 o'clock up at altitude 140. You see it there, the dark spectrum? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, this would be a pretty shot here. How Let's far? put some music down. That's right. Okay, we got a helicopter coming, so watch your altitude. helicopter in the mess. Let's watch out. Just for the record, I am flying at 43 feet here. Okay, okay I'm about 800 feet away. No, I have no video problems at all. Okay, see, I know DJI will, it typically has a better range than Unique does. And it's just, uh, now when the H comes out, we'll see how that is. Uh, <laughs> There's our journey. Okay. I'm gonna cruise over our heads. Now we are in absolutely perfect flying conditions. I, they really could not get any better than this. So here's what we're gonna do this time. After everything's set up, we're gonna go up, we'll go up maybe a couple hundred feet out, altitude maybe 150, 200 feet. We're just gonna go into a hover. If everything goes well, I'm gonna try to give you a side-by-side -side or an A-B comparison. The difference between the Phantom camera and the Q500 4K. Both are set up to shoot at 3840 by 2160s. Okay, so give us a moment. We'll be up in the air, so let's cue the music.
Okay, as you can see, you just saw two different copters flying. Now, I know that we, did, we didn't really give a lot of instruction here. We're just out having fun. But now, this is the first time you've seen a Typhoon fly. It is. What's your initial thought? Oh, I like smooth. It's nice. Very, it's quiet. It's smooth. It seems to be a great flying copter. You know, and it, that's one thing. The size is maybe about 20% larger. Yeah, a little bit bigger. It is quieter. Yeah, you know when it's flying overhead. Yeah. It uh, sounds like a swarm of bees. Now, we did notice distance-wise. You know, I only took this out about 900 feet, and I think that's around the time I started losing video signal. Now, when I fly at home on the golf course, I typically get 450. 450 to 500 feet, but we're out here where there's no Wi-Fi signals. I don't even know if we have a cell signal out here. We have no interference, and I was getting roughly twice the distance, but you're getting a lot further on the fan. Yeah, I made it to 1,400 feet with no interference whatsoever. Yeah, and you know that's one thing, being out here in the desert in the middle of nowhere. I think the bottom line is there's there's not a bad copter. I mean, we're both flying. Today is just the perfect conditions. I'm going to tell you, it was a pleasure flying with really you. Fun. I mean, Thanks so much. Isn't it great that there are this kind of choices yes. or this many choices out there for copters? Thanks Ted, so much. Appreciate as it. As always, thank you. For more information, go to GadgetGuru.com. I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Parr.